Tonight we are very happy to have Johan Levin uh, from Desideri Marginis, uh, who used to be on cold meat uh, industry and who is now a sign with uh, Cyclic Low. And we are happy to uh, catch him right on tour uh, in Paris for the show that uh, we have seen tonight. How has uh, this tour been going for you so far? It has been uh, amazing, really. It's a great uh, opportunity to, go, to be uh, able to play for an uh, for extended period of time across Europe in places we have never been. And also um, me and Peter and Roger, we are close friends, so we get along really well. So we have a lot of fun. Uh, meanwhile, we're doing it. So it has been a, yeah, crazy fun and people have been so friendly and you know welcoming. Uh, it's been really, really nice to be able to connect with people uh, that you are in touch with only online perhaps and you meet them again and it, old friends show up, new friends show up. It's a, it's a fantastic experience. I'm really happy about it. What is uh, till now the best uh, show you did? What for you is the best, best memory? Um, I think maybe, maybe Vienna was really nice and also Milan. Yeah. was uh, really hilarious because we did not know what to expect and it was completely packed and it was really a crazy evening as well so it was a good fun cool. is it your first time you played in paris uh, no. no i played here uh, 11 years ago in uh, 2013 at the cyclic law anniversary festival at uh, le petit bain uh, in paris that was really good as well We had a, a great time then. Frederick uh, Arbour is a great guy, uh, the label manager of Psychic Law, and he uh, and uh, also a friend Vincent Glom, who is here tonight, who brought me the cigarettes, by the way. Uh, thank you. Um, he was there and he showed us around Paris. We went to, uh, you know, La Fiver, uh, it's like absinthe place. We had a really, really good time. Uh, lots of lots of people. So, I'm I'm very happy to be back uh, finally. Yeah, it's such a long time. Yes. Uh, did you have the time to go to the catacombs? No. No. Unfortunately not. We have been to many great places, but we have only seen them from the tour bus. So I could take a picture of Monte Cassino <laughs> in, uh, in Italy. Um, and uh, yeah, many, we were very in Naples. We were very close to, to Pompeii and to Herculaneum, which I would love to visit someday, but not this time. In fact, it has been a very tight schedule. So it would be perfect for your future albums. Some yeah, yeah, yeah indeed. Yeah. Uh, just go there for a vacation, collect sounds or whatever. It, yeah, yeah, so many places. But it's nice because you, when you travel around, You see so many new places and you find, oh, I need to go there eventually, you know? Mm. It's so good. You, it's like, like you add places to your to-do list. Yeah. So it's Take very some, cool. some notes of the future yeah, yeah, holidays. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you meet people and they said, oh, wow, so nice. You know, if you ever are in the area, come visit us or we hang out. Uh, mm. It's uh, fantastic. What music from your discography do you play in concert and uh, what gear and equipment do you use on stage? Um, I try to vary it a bit, but for this tour I have mainly taken tracks from the uh, latest albums. Uh, latest album actually, uh, because it has not been released yet. So the music is quite new to people. Uh, I got the CDs from the printing press only two days before we left for the tour. Oh. So they are not officially released yet. So I tried to make uh, some, some fresh music and some fresh experience for the, for the audience as well. And I throw in maybe one older track and one track from the previous album. But since I am the first act every day, I, try, I have to keep the set quite short, around 40 minutes. So there is a limit to how much I can squeeze in as well. And I try to make the set um, like a continuous flow Uh, so, and the tracks from the latest album is really, they are quite long. So you can't do a, a lot of tracks, you know, because they kind of, they are very dynamic, they build up. Uh, so, yeah. so between five and six track and, and the show is done. Yeah, I think it's uh, six tracks actually, so that's good. And uh, for the gear, I have my, I have a, a digital mixer with uh, the separate Uh, tracks. Tr yeah, for, for, for each track I have separate sounds so I can mix them uh, a bit depending on the venue and I have a, a looping station 
it's a Boss RC505 for you <coughs> gear nerds Mark II. <laughs> and I have it uh, connected to uh, some contact mics, uh, to some uh, metals. And uh, when I have the time, I try to find objects around the area. Uh, in uh, Listal in Switzerland, I found a, a big uh, old uh, saw that it was possible to play with the bow. It sounded amazing. So when I have the time, I try to do that as well, just to have to add contact mics to it. And I have the, the Lyra to make uh, some noise in some, uh, some tracks as well. So, but I try to keep it simple because I need uh, to have as little equipment as possible so I can pack it quickly after each set. So. The beginning of your project date back uh, around uh, 93 with some demo tapes. You contributed to a, a first compilation and even wolves hit their teeth and tongues wherever shelter was given. Released in 95 on Cold Meat Industry. And these release your first songs over the room in 97 on the same label. What led you to this project? Um, do you mean the, how I got in touch with Cold Meat or the project in general? You, the project in general, what pushes <coughs> you to... Yeah, I was... Uh, it, b before I started Desiderium Morganis, I was in another band, which was a bit uh, similar to, you know, uh, Legendary Pink Dots. It was um, a, 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 a kind of a mixture of, of genres, uh, that band. Very, very nice, but also we were four people in the band. And uh, I did most of the music, and you, when you do that, and you have input from other people, something that you did, uh, you often need to compromise with uh, someone says, oh, "This track doesn't have a chorus," or "This track maybe we should have a beat." And I tried, uh, and I'm I'm interested in kind of uh, long ambient parts, even within a pop song, you know. Uh, so I, I I really like doing those things, but the other guys thought mm, maybe this is too long for a pop song. Uh, so I eventually I, I felt that I, I can do the, all the ambient stuff uh, perhaps by myself uh, and also at that time uh, I was going to school the same school as uh, Peter Anderson from Raison d'Etre and he had given me some of his demo tapes and, um, and I thought oh this is really really nice that was in 91 and um, and then I bought, uh, the first album I bought from Call Meat was the Morthon, This Crying Age, um, which is also really special. And I, and I figured out that, oh, music can also be this. It can be something completely non-musical, just ambience, you know. And to me, that was fantastic. So I decided to, uh, to start this project uh, by myself, you know, on the side, just to not have to compromise all the time you know so that that was the main reason i think what influences you to create is it more uh, books or movies or what surrounded you politics i uh, I, I work like this that uh, i always collect uh, stuff uh, into like like a bigger catalog of things you know i have a, like a, can be sounds can be photographs can be poems music, just uh, phrases, uh, themes from books and I just, uh, when I find something that I'm interested in, I kind of, uh, I take a note, make it and, and I just, it just builds up into a big pile and eventually when I want to start making music again, I go back and I look at what, what has been interesting for me the last year or so and then I, 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 I look at it and some, sometimes it's interesting because you can find uh, two uh, two different uh, themes and then you combine them and then something interesting happens you know when when you combine some personal experience with some uh, other I don't know artistic topic or whatever or a typical sound that you have been interested in and when you put them together you you know you add one and one and it becomes three you know and then you can work with it so uh, I, I like that so you do yourself uh your, uh, all your fil films recordings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All all the sounds, all the stuff I find, I, I record. Yeah. I, Mostly I, nature, also cities, or what? what anything. Is, anything. Anything you, you yeah. can grab. Yeah. Anything that catches my interest, uh, I like to gather for future use. I have a, such a big uh, sound library at home with stuff I did not use yet, but someday perhaps it can be good.
How did you end up signing with Coal Meat Industry and what did the label represent to you at that time? Uh, the label was very obscure to me. I did not know almost anything about them. Uh, they, they were so small and so yeah, obscure and they had their, their label office was in a basement in Linköping, like an old air raid shelter that you could not get into. And uh, so I, I gave my demos to Peter Anderson and he was working at Cold Meat. You know, when, when you go to school, you have this uh, kind of internship where you have two weeks when you do practice at some uh, work. And he did it at Cold Meat Industry Office in Linköping. And he brought the tapes and he played them for Roger. And he said, yeah, I could be interesting in releasing that, maybe. Uh, so, yeah, so he, uh, he called me and I said, yeah, I will make a, a master for it. And then I went to the office to, to give him the master. It was a DAT tape. And uh, so I went down the stairs to the basement. I knocked on the door. It's just a cold cool meat industry. And he just opened the door. Says, Hello. Hi, I'm you one. His demo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> like so. It was like nothing more. So it was very strange. But then eventually the record shows up. And it, uh, yeah, I, I love him. It's, it's fine. But this is how the friendship started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. Your studio is called Solitude Studio. What are the uh, perfect conditions for composing and making music, especially dark and then music? I don't think there are perfect conditions for it, actually. Oh. And I think that it's a mistake to wait for perfect conditions, because they will never happen. It's like an artist who waits for inspiration. It's the biggest curse of any artist. Uh, I think the best you can do, it's like, any, like a painter, you know? Even if you're not painting a picture, you get up in the morning and you paint. It doesn't matter if it becomes a picture or not, you know? Because you have to do it, you have to work into it. It's the same for me at least with music that uh, you can't wait for inspiration to happen, you know. You just have to dig into it and after just one, two hours working with it, you, maybe you didn't feel like it, but after a while you do. And when you do, at least for me, I can't stop, you know. I can sit in the studio for 24 hours and I pour a beer and seven hours later I realized I didn't drink the beer. <laughs> yeah, because I have been so busy, preoccupied. So I think you need to me, uh, I don't like the word inspiration. I prefer motivation, to motivate yourself to do what you like. Because inspiration is such a, uh, is such a dubious mistress, yeah. I think. Your latest album, Bath in the Black Light, which you recorded and released digitally on Bandcamp uh, page in 2001, is finally coming on, on CD through Cyclo. What can you tell us about this album? It is uh, pretty um, um, emotionally based, really. Not so much uh, uh, any kind of particular theme that I work with, but it was just a um, sort of a, a, a feeling that I wanted to present that was kind of a, um, a, a celebration kind of a to or a tribute to to the dark hours and the dark things in everyone that is not uh, that is not really bad it, it doesn't have to be bad it's just uh, yeah so, so, something to to enjoy and to put forth and I wanted it to be a bit heavy and majestic and celebrational sparkling that was kind of the, the thing I would like like a, a firework that you see at night you know something like that so that was the feeling I was going for when I did it did uh, was it because of the actuality of uh, our latest uh, three four years that you wanted something more sparkling as you said or uh, I, I don't know maybe perhaps uh, not consciously but um, uh, no it was just something that I felt that I had not been doing in that way so, no, D during the pandemic, I didn't make much music at all, actually. So. Not like most of the band that produced a lot? No, no, not, no, not really, no. But uh, I, I thought also that um, uh, maybe with some perspective, I will be able to make an album about the pandemic. But to me, it was not, uh, I did not find it uh, inspirational, the pandemic. Uh, it, it, maybe with some perspective, I will, but at that time, I did not. So. Are you living in, in a city or more outside of, of town? I just moved into the city. 
Oh. I lived in the a house in the countryside before, but in October now I moved to a flat closer to the city at least. So, oh. uh, so it, I, it's only temporary because I plan to move back into the countryside when I find the proper house for it. Because I like to be able to have uh, my studio and play loud music. Uh, also, I, I really love uh, gardening, uh, so I want to have my garden again. So. Do you think that uh, will in, uh, affect your music being in town? <clears throat> Um, may, maybe, maybe you can. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't recorded anything at my new place yet. Uh, so, but when I lived in uh, London, I didn't make any music at all. I felt completely um, unmotivated when I was there to, oh. to make music. I found the city really boring, to be honest, <laughs> very uninspired. Uh, so you need the, the quietness of the, the countryside. It, it helps. It helps, uh, I think. To make you to make you feel better as well. I feel very much uh, at peace in the countryside, mm. and I think it's easier to make music when you are at peace compared to if, if you are in a chaotic situation. Um, some artists like being in chaos or when they are going through a very difficult times. But to, to me, if I'm going through difficult times, I am not inspired to make music. You just want to go to bed, you know, or, or be someplace else. So. I, You, you can you can process the experience of feeling bad afterwards, but when you are feeling bad, you are not doing anything proper at all. At least not me. So, your first release on the Cyclic Low was the album Procession in 2012. What can you tell us about this label and about Frederick Arbor? I think he's a super nice guy, Frederick. I, I know I knew about the label uh, long before; they've been around for a while. And um, for me, it was kind of a quite an easy choice or easy person to approach. Uh, after Cold Meat went uh, bankrupt, uh, so uh, and I didn't have a label, um, so I thought maybe I will get in touch with uh, Frederick, and he was interested right away. And I, I met him a long time ago because we were going to tour in Canada and the United States. Uh, so we flew to Montreal, but the, can the tour was cancelled because they wouldn't let us in, which was a complete fuck up, of course. But because of taxes and uh, all those stuff? Or? No, because they, they, they realized that we were musicians in their customs in Canada. Oh. They found the merch, they started looking into oh, where are you playing, and, uh, and we didn't have a working permit. Oh. And they said, no, 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 you're not coming in. So that was a, that was a nasty lesson. Yeah. So that, that was when I met him at the first time, because he was the organizer of the show in Montreal. But uh, I met him since, and he's a really cool guy. So, yeah. Uh, do you have any plans for release something else this year? Um, Only for, for coming times. Yes, I have. Maybe not releasing, but I'm working on stuff. I think it will be super nice. But I, I, artists always say that, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I have uh, plenty of plans actually, so they will be more. Perfect. So thank you very much again for this uh, time, and uh, we're very happy to have you tonight yeah. and to see you live in Paris. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> have a nice evening and enjoy Paris. Ah, we'll thank right. you.